I feel like people would have enjoyed the tuning part. Enough likes and I'll do it. How much likes you want, man? At least 200k on this comment. Close enough. Hey guys, quick little video for you today. I am just gonna show you how to tune an electric motorcycle. If you guys don't know, I built this bike up, basically upgraded all the parts on it, different hub motor, different battery, new controller. And the controller comes from the factory, not tuned for, at least for our application. Um, so it was completely out of tune right when we plugged it all in. So what we had to do is tune the controller, program it so it would work well with the other upgrades that we did. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple task to do. So in my case, I need a laptop, I need a cord, and I need the bike. The controller you could have got on Bluetooth adapter, you plug it in where this would plug in, and then wirelessly you can change the parameters on the bike. But I didn't want to spend $26. I figured if I had to tune the bike, it's gonna be kind of a one-time thing or a couple times I'd have to plug it in. No big deal. So I'm using a cable, I'm using a laptop, and I'm using the bike. So the controller I'm using in this bike is a KLS 7275H. Um, I think the Kelly controller just lumps them all in. So this is a KLS H class, um, class controller, yep. So let's jump straight into it. Pretty easy, all I gotta do is take off the seat, and plug it in, and we're set to go. Like any other motorcycle, you stick the key in, unlatch the seat. The port that we need to access is this one from the Kelly. It's, you know, just, I mean, this is it. it there's no other cable, it looks like it. So it's a four pin connector, and here's the adapter. So you can see both four pin. If you plug it in the wrong way, it blows the bike up. So you have to be really careful. I, I think this is the right way. So as simple as just plugging it in, and you can hear it click right in, and that's that. So now I'm gonna connect this end, which is just a USB, to my laptop. And of course, it's better just to let your controller warm up, so just make sure that you turn the ignition on, and that sends power to the controller, and the controller needs a, you know, a minute or so just to kind of warm up, and then it will connect to your computer. So I might as well just start it now while we connect it to the computer. All right, so then of course, you would just plug it right into your computer. And while the controller is kind of warming up still, I am going to show you guys really quick. This is the Kelly website for the controller. They have support. This is the user manual for the controller that we bought. As you can see, this is the Kelly KLSH um, brushless motor controller user's manual. And it has a couple different model numbers, but ours fits right in there with it. Yeah, so there's a lot here. I'm not gonna go over all this with you, um, but here's the website, a lot, a lot of stuff there. Pretty much just anything you would need to wire this up. It was pretty straightforward. So we're gonna go down to the bottom, about right here. This is page, uh, it says 17, 18. This is literally a description of every single parameter that you can adjust. Um, and so this will take a little bit of thinking and a little brain power on your part. Um, don't overthink it though. Exactly what it says is exactly what it changes. So let me pull up the program that we're gonna be using. This is again downloadable from Kelly's website. It's called the KMC user app. So the KMC, there's a couple different ones. Um, just get the right program. You gotta download the right program for your bike so it reads correctly. But mine in this case is the KMC user app. And then it pops up a warning sign that says if the motor is spinning, don't use this. But of course it's not, so we're gonna hit OK. And then it'll pop up. And because I don't know how to screen record on an HP, <laughs> this is gonna have to do. All right, um, at least you guys are in 4K, so I'll zoom in and out as necessary. But I'm not gonna go over every single one. This is literally for you to read. I'm not gonna read every description for every parameter but I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I use. This is the parameters for my bike. Um, so this is exactly what I use for an 8,000 watt QS hub motor, brushless hub motor. And I'm also gonna show you guys how to write the parameters. If you wanna make any changes, I'll show you guys how to change it and what to do. So let's jump right into it. So there are three different sections, the vehicle, the motor, and the controller. Um, so we'll start with the vehicle. This, you don't have too much to change here. There were some things that we changed right off the bat, but I didn't need to change after a while, like TPS dead low, TPS dead high, that kind of stuff. That just means throttle, however much play you want there to be at the top. So anyway, moving on, there's a lot of different parameters here. As you click on them down here, Kelly actually makes it pretty easy. It just gives you a small description down here of everything. So you can actually probably just read most of this stuff. I know it's not worded quite the same as on their website. So some, sometimes this is more confusing than the website. So if you don't know what something does based on this description, just jump over to the website, find the parameter that you need, 
and then it, it describes it a little bit better on their website. Okay, so that being said, again, I'm not gonna go through every single one. You guys can jump around on this. If this is your first time going into this as well, you'll hear a lot of warnings that, you know, if you change anything, it's gonna explode your bike and you could, you know, destroy all your hard work and, you know, change one thing just a little bit and the bike's gonna blow up. Don't actually, you know, just don't listen to that. It's not that big of a deal if you change one thing. Take that with a grain of salt, of course. Like, don't change too much thinking it's gonna be okay not knowing what you're doing. Like, in my case, let's jump over to the controller section. I actually have to change two things um, that I want to increase. And I'm just gonna put it up a little bit. And so if you know what you're doing and you know what you need to change and why you're changing it, don't even worry about making a mistake because, I mean, you can just tell. When you turn the bike back on and it doesn't behave exactly like you thought it would, so moving on to the controller section, this is basically the inputs, that, you know, the, the controller functions that you can change. Um, so I'm gonna change the RLS TPS brake percent. I already know that's the, um, the regen braking on deceleration. So I'm gonna actually change that up to 15%. And the brake switch percent basically is when you start braking, regen's going to kick on to a certain percentage and I am going to turn that up to, let's do 17. I want more regen and we installed the fan and you know I think we're all set to, to boost it just a little bit higher. So with that being changed, um, I'm gonna just show you guys around the motor as well. There's more parameters for the motor, um, but it's kind of just general stuff. I don't even think we changed anything in the motor setting. Actually, never mind. We did change the motor poles because the controller was programmed originally for eight pole motor. The one we are using, the 8,000 watt QS hub motor, is a 16 pole motor. And then I'm pretty sure that was it, just the poles. And that was a one-time change. I mean, it was just basically matching up the controller to the motor. So anyway, yeah, so the controller, we changed RLS TPS brake percent to 15. We also changed brake switch percent uh, to 17. So let's write that. To change anything, all you have to do is change the parameter here and then go down and as long as you're sure you wanna make those changes and it won't do anything bad to the motor or the controller or the bike, you just guys, you guys just click right. And then it pops up some Chinese for you but it does say right success in English over here on the left side. And then you just hit okay. And as long as that's all that you wanna change, go ahead and just quit out of the program and then just switch off the bike, turn off the power to it. And then in my case, I have to flip off the breaker as well because the controller still has a little bit of power in it until I flip off the breaker. So you have to basically hard reset the bike every time you make changes. So let me just reach in here. So you'll hear a click when it flips. And that is the breaker turning off. Okay, and with the breaker turned back on, I'm gonna turn the ignition back on, let the controller start warming up again. And now let's uh, make sure the change is wrote correctly. So we'll open the app again. The, the motor is not spinning. And there is an issue if you open it too fast where it says uh, cannot read or you know read error or whatever. You just have to let the controller warm up and just give it a couple minutes and keep trying opening the app and eventually it'll pull up the, the, um, the interface. So here it is again. Let's make sure those changes wrote correctly. So we'll go down to controller and looks like they did 15 and 17 percent is exactly what we wrote so that's as simple as it gets right there that's all you need to know let's turn the bike on and see how it functions now that we wrote those changes all right so i'm going to put the bike on the center stand of course just so that the wheel is free spinning i adjusted regenerative braking so let's see how it does oh that's perfect that's beautiful. That stops pretty quick. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we wanted. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So with that done, that wraps it up. That's as easy as it gets. All right, and for the sake of the video, just to show you guys how easy it is, I'm gonna actually turn regenerative braking back off and show you how it spins with it without regenerative braking on. So I already have it pulled up, of course. I'm gonna go to the controller settings. I'm going to go to RLS underscore TPS brake percent. I'm going to change that to zero. I'm going to write the changes. Write success. I'm gonna push okay. And then I'm going to push quit. And turn off the bike, turn off the breaker. 
Okay, breakers back on. Turn the bike back on. And now what you guys will see, I turned regenerative braking on deceleration off. So when I give it some throttle, the tires start spinning. When I let off the throttle, it's gonna continue to keep free spinning like you're in neutral basically. And so let's, let's give it a look. See how easy that is? It took me, I don't know, like a couple minutes to do that. So since I turned off regenerative braking on deceleration, so basically if I release the throttle, it'll, you know, regen will kick on and recharge the bike and whatever. Um, I didn't turn off regen on braking. So let me show you guys how that works. So if I increase the speed of the bike, this is the front brake right here. So the rear, rear brake is not activating it at all. So if I pull the front brake, you guys can see regen still kicks on. Just like that. And that was all regen, that's all regen. So yeah, I love it, that, that's perfect. But for the sake of the video, let's turn it back on because that's how I want it while I'm riding. So the bike is already on, so let's go ahead and just pull up the tuning program, the Kelly Controller app. The tire is not spinning. Okay, so let's go down to controller. RLS underscore TPS brake percent. Let's change that, I'm just gonna put it at 14. I'm not going to go too crazy and uh, I think that's good. So let's write that. Write success, push OK, push quit, turn off the bike, turn off the breaker, turn on the breaker, and then turn on the bike. And you guys will see those changes were, were written so I will throttle it and then as I release Regen will kick back on. Exactly what we wanted right there. And that's as easy as it gets right there. That's, that's pretty much it. Also for your sake, let me just see if I can um, replicate the read error or whatever it tells me. So let me see if I can replicate that. So if we're opening the program, the tire's not spinning, okay. And it says read data error. So you'll get that if the if the controller's still warming up and it's not at full capacity what you know just yet, it doesn't connect to the computer. So let's just give it a second. Um, I, I noticed that retry doesn't actually really do anything. Um, so what I do is I just cancel out of that and then you know after a couple seconds just try it again. It doesn't hurt anything to just keep clicking on it. So just give it a second. Let's try it again. Read data error. And there it is. Yeah, it took like, you know, it took like about a minute or so, but it pulls it up. You just gotta let the controller do its thing and get connected and you're all set to rock and roll. I will say too, these are my settings. This is for my bike. So I have the Kelly controller. It's a KLSH model. I have the 8,000 watt brushless hub motor from QS Motors. So these are my settings for that setup. These are the vehicle settings here. These are my motor settings here. And then these are my controller settings here. And I think this is the perfect combination. Of course, you guys can tweak whatever parameters you want to make it fit your style more. Oh, I will say too, um, th the bike used to be a three gear switch. It has one on the, the handlebars to switch between, you know, sport, drive, reverse, that kind of thing. But since I wired it up, it doesn't support that anymore. It's kind of just a go and a stop. Um, so I turned off three gear switch and it works great. Foot switch I also turned off. It does have it, but it doesn't really make a difference. So I turned that off just cause it ran better without it. All right, so pretty easy process all said and done. I mean, it only takes you a couple minutes to do if you wanna make any tweaks. And again, if I had the Bluetooth module, it would be a little bit easier for me and I could just like connect to my phone instead of having to take off the seat and like connect a computer, all that kind of stuff. But I saved $26, so uh, no big deal. And since I have it tuned now 100% the way I want it, I don't, I don't see why I would need to change it in the future anyway. So that's pretty much it, guys. If this helped you out, that's awesome. If you have questions still, leave them down in the comments. I'm always trolling you guys in the comments, so you know I'll catch you there. But if not, building electric bikes like this, it, it has been a lot of fun. This is my first build. We're moving on to a new one. Uh-huh, yep, secret project coming your way, like next week. 
So I'm super excited and it's it's a really easy process. I've grown to love Kelly controllers. I know you guys, as some of you guys are pros or whatever, YouTube commenters that know everything. You guys think Kelly controllers are limited in what they can do when you get higher end ones, whatever. Unfortunately, the ones that zero motorcycles use and all that kind of stuff, it's proprietary technology, so you can't make any changes to the parameters yourself. So I think the Kelly controller is the best hobby kind of grade controller there is. There's a lot of customization you guys can do to it um, and you don't have to pay top dollar to have somebody program it for you. So that's it, that's it. I'll catch you guys next time. Smash that like button and that subscribe button. And dude, only like 10% of you guys have the notification bell rung. Come on, man, come on, just give that a ring. I'd love to have you guys every single video I post. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'll catch you guys next time.